What's up everyone? So this is the fifth video of Lua Snip video series and in this video I'm going to talk about function node. I'll start by creating a snippet node, trigger character is ii and I'll create a function node to which I'm going to pass in a callback function. Here you should always return a string. So return, let's call this hello. I can use this. When I expand the snippet, it will expand into the return value of the function node. Now you may ask what's the difference between a text node and a function node. Well, you can do some dynamic stuff with function node. For example, I can do OS date and use the current year, current month and current date. And uh, when I use this snippet, it will expand into the current date. So uh, there is one more really nice feature I want to cover in this video that is dependencies. I'll use an example for that. So basically we are going to create an snippet, a snippet for uh, importing some module. User is going to update the path to the module and function node is going to auto generate the variable name according to the user input. So that's what we are going to do. Let me just get rid of all this. I'll generate the template using fmt local placeholder equal require double quotes and another placeholder within that double quotes. Okay, there we go. Um, now first placeholder is going to be a function node and second one is going to be a insert node because that's something user is going to change but this is something we are going to auto generate. Now we should be able to get the user input from this insert node to the callback function of the function node, right? Well, how do I do that? You can pass in a second parameter. Um, it's going to be an array, array of dependencies. If I pass one here, that basically means that the function node we are creating is going to be depending on um, the node at jump index one. Let me repeat that again. When I pass in one, Lua snip is going to look for a node that has jump index one. In our case, this is the only um, only insert node we have with a jump index. So it will refer to this and get the value and pass that value into the callback function. Now to capture the call, um, value node value, I'll create a variable called values because sometimes you may have to pass in multiple dependencies this is valid as well let's say i have a oops i have a, another node called two and this is completely valid you can depend on both of these uh, input nodes so you will get multiple values in that case um first i will print the value or rather values variable then for now I'll just return name from here uh, so when I use this snippet you can see it prints an empty uh, string but I can update for example I can add test and hit escape when I hit escape it's going to re-evaluate the function so this statement will be executed one more time that's why it's printing test so basically we get the value uh, one thing you can do in lua snip is to update the uh, update events so you can go to for example um, your lazy nvim configuration um, for lua snip in my case this is the one and you can call this thing right here so here we are requiring Lua snip and accessing config, calling setup function. I'm passing update events text changed and text changed i. This is going to be uh, triggered when I change some text in normal mode, but this is for insert mode. Sorry, insert mode. So as I'm typing, it's going to reevaluate the snippet. So let's go to the uh, file once again 
now when I use the same snippet and when I change the text you can see it's going to uh, update the value as I'm typing so that's quite good okay now we have the value but it's wrapped inside bunch of arrays so, so to access that I'll just create a variable and access values first index of the first array and within that we have another array so I'm going to access the first index of that as well so we got the value now sometimes in modules we have period right this is the path that we are following to access that particular um, module so we need to get rid of periods because that is not a valid uh, character for a variable name in Lua so to do that I'll just do um, local path then I'm going to call vim split I'm going to pass in value then I'm going to split this by period so we are going to get an array of values that contains each of these uh, text I'm only going to access the last one because that's the most relevant one for example fmt for fmt you know we can simply use that as the variable name so let's return path and the last index of path okay this looks good so let me refresh and use the snippet so when I hit control I we get this and as I'm updating it should update the value as well so let's try to access a module called name and is going to be updated that is pretty good so just like that we have created a um, import snippet now there are a few more things I should cover in this video so I'll just uh, get rid of all this then uh, let's actually get rid of all this asset okay um, now I'll create three placeholders then let's add two input nodes I'll add some default value for these as well then final one is going to be a function node here I'll pass in a callback function as usual let's add um, some dependencies I'll, I'll actually change the order just to show you how this is working so I'm gonna add one here and what do you think the value is going to be is it one 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 or two 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 um, well as I said we are referring to the jump index so it's going to be this um, in, insert node right here so I'm gonna get values here I'll just print it out okay now as you can see we get 111 because it's referring to this one right here now we could add two as well in that case um, we're going to get both of them as you can see then once again we can change the order of the dependencies for example I can do two here and after that one when you do that it's going to change the order of the uh, values as well so we get the two first and one as the second parameter now I should mention that you could add um, multiple lines to the insert node using an array or table so line one and line 2 just like that and when you use the snippet you get both of the, those lines so you have line 1 and line 2 that's actually why you get an array um, even if you have a single line it's it's going to wrap inside a, an array uh, that's why because it could have multiple lines so those are the things I should mention in this video um, so yeah that's how function node is working and 
uh, be creative with it and let uh, let me know what you come up with um, function node okay that's it thanks for watching have a nice day